Okay, let's do another analytic geometry question where we want to find the equation of a parabola. So we're asked, what is the equation of a parabola with a vertex of 4, 8? So 4, 8, this is our h, this is our k, and the directrix is given as y equals 5. And we want to find the equation for a parabola. So let's begin by drawing a picture of what we're given. We're given the vertex and the directrix. For so for that, let's denote our x-axis, let's denote our y-axis, and we are told that the vertex is at 4, 8. So I'm going to go 4 to the right, up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're going to be somewhere here. This is our vertex. I'll call it v. That's my vertex point given here. And this is going to be my h. This is going to be my k point. And also we're told that the directrix is y equals to 5. So it's just going to be a line through 5 along the y-axis. This is our x-axis. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be there. And I'll just draw a line. This is my directrix line. And I'll denote that direct rex. So we have that and we can automatically denote since our directrix is not touching the x-axis, meaning it's not vertical, it's horizontal. It doesn't pass through the x-axis, it passes through the y-axis. We can automatically say it's denoted that the parabola is going to open upwards. So this is very important. We're going to have some parabola. So if I draw it, it's going to open upwards. Something like this. Fix this. Okay, so we have our parabola. And we know our directrix is at y equals 5. We have our vertex. It's at the point 4, 8. And at the end of the day, we want to find the equation of a parabola. So what do we do first? First, I recommend we look in the FE handbook and look at the equation for a parabola. So we know this is in the new FE handbook. It's under conic sections. You can go down on page 43. And for a parabola, our, the eccentricity value is 1. So we don't need that at this point. But we have this equation. So we're going to have the equation that looks something like this. But the only difference here, don't get confused. This is when we have a directrix that passes through the x-axis. Meaning the parabola is going to be symmetric about the x-axis. So you see how it's mirrored both ways about the x-axis. It's symmetric about the x-axis. So we're going to have to just do the opposite of what we have here. This is this only works. This equation is only going to work when it's symmetric about the x-axis. In our case, it's symmetric about the y-axis. It's going to open upwards. It doesn't open to the sides. It opens upwards. So if we rewrite this the way we would rewrite this in our... So we can ultimately solve the question. It's going to be x minus h squared equals to 2 times p y minus k. You see how we did the opposite here. So it's not y minus k. We did x minus h h squared 2p then we did y minus k we replace the x with y we replace the h with k we're doing the opposite because this once again is symmetric about the x-axis that's not what we have in our case so don't get, get confused by that please and so this is the right form and this is the form that we want we know our h values for so we know this is 4 and we know that our k value is 8 so if can I eliminate some stuff yes we can eliminate a and D so we're only left with B and C so what we need here is essentially our 
p-value, right? So to determine this p-value, we're going to first determine our p over 2. So I think this is denoted in the handbook. So this is, replace this with y because we have our parabola opening upwards. It's going to be negative p over 2. So we need this p over 2. And if I draw that, what we mean by p over 2 here is we're going to be looking at the distance from the vertex to the directrix. That's our p over 2. So this distance from the vertex to the directrix is p over 2. So this p over 2 is going to equal to what? So we can simply denote that we know at this point it's going to be what? It's going to be 8, right? This is 8 because we went from 0 to 8 for our k value. This point is what? It's just 5, right? Where the directrix is, is 5. So our p over 2 is just the difference 8 minus 5. You do 8 minus 5 and you should get around 3. So that's our p over 2. Therefore, we have our p over 2 equals to 3. So if I write that here, p over 2 equals to 3. Multiply 2 by both sides. We can solve for p. p is going to equal to 6. So that's gonna be our p value and you just plug in 6 in here and you do the 2 times 6 and that would give you 12 right so our answer here is b and c is automatically out once we solve our p value so this is how we solve this and let's just add some notes to this so we can find the foci or the focus this is gonna be a distance p over 2 from the vertex so this is also denoted in the handbook. So the focus is P over 2 from the vertex. So if we go back, the vertex is at this point, 4 comma 8, right? So the focus is P over 2 from the vertex. So you're going to have to go 3. We know our value of P over 2 is 3. So from the vertex, we're going to have to jump 3. 1. 2, 3. So this point, if I go here, let me denote it in a different color. This is our focus. Let's call it capital F. That's our focus point, and it's going to be at what? So this is 0. We go up 11, so 11 in the y, and in the x, it's just going to be 4, right? So we do 4 in the x, 11 in the y. That's our focus point. And that's important as well. This helps us denote so we know if we go back to the handbook, the folk they drew the focus here when we have this case, so it's symmetric about the x-axis, and they denoted the p-values as well. So essentially here this would be our total p-value. This is my p-value here. So that's important in order for us to denote the p-value to find the focus and relating it to the directrix. And that's all. I hope that helps. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and let me know if you have questions. Thank you.